started going into the cloud. But going into the cloud also requires, you know, a good understanding on the security side, especially from the government side, right? Mm -hmm. All the Fed ramp and all those NIST mm -hmm. components and bringing the right resources to understand, you know, the security, the technology, as well as the policies, right? To make sure that you we are doing the right things. But a lot of organizations now being forced to go to the cloud, um, their biggest fear is always security, right? And, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's later about, you know, at least three, three tips that I'll give you guys, you know, if you're looking into get into the cloud from an Office 365, we can talk about that. But but it's it's that fear of, you know, what's going to happen to my data? Where is it going to go? How am I going to secure it? How are my people going to access yeah. it? What if they, you know, what if they go into it and all of a sudden they lose a, a laptop, a device, you know, how do we, uh, um, make it simple not only simple but then also hard for the bad people to come in and do something bad yeah. to, to that data yeah, it's, right? because it's critical yeah. yeah you'd be surprised how much, especially if you talk about the healthcare all this you know issues and violations and, and fines that people are are getting right uh, because mm -hmm. if they're losing you know they're not being compliant um it's something that scares a lot of people going to the cloud but now with this big push that priority of those projects have come up but mm -hmm. with security in mind in the forefront because it, it, you have to you know you yeah can't it's all about security what what are those three things like if you were to say gino um thinking about using office 365 for your organization yeah. doesn't matter who you are you could be the the local um hallmark franchise you know shop down the street or you could be the dod what are the three basic <laughs> things you should think about when exactly. using office 365 absolutely and so now microsoft is making it easier and easier especially when you move to that is the, the first one is and a lot of people are they call it two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication yep. uh that allows the you know the administrator to enable that for all your users and it makes it very simple it gives the user options they could be they can receive a text right to authenticate themselves they can receive a phone call, you know, with a to their cell phone, or they can, if like, for example, some of our folks are on the SCIF, right? Uh, me meaning it's a secure environment, but they do have access to a, a to a phone that they can put that number, they pick it up, and they can now check some, you know, our corporate emails if they need to, right? If it's necessary. Okay. Um, and uh, so there's different options uh, that allows us a so multi-factor authentication. Number one. Uh, Why is number, having another factor of authentication important? Just for the people you know that might be watching that aren't familiar with that. What, what's the first fact? First factor is your username and password. Yeah, username and password. It's, right. it's two values. Like if you lose a username and pa or yeah. a password, right? Somebody hacks it. That's one, and they can log in. And and, and if you have administrative, that's you it, know, right? access or whatever, they can. <laughs> yeah. they that that's that second. Day. It's important because it's it's tied to you, right? It's right. tied to your right. you know, that like phone nowadays. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's like it can be a text if a con or you can even download an app called the uh, Microsoft um, Authenticator, you right. know, where you put a piece of, uh, piece of code. Or, it's like know. so easy. All I do is it comes to my iPhone for multi-factor and I just scan my thumb and I'm done. I mean, it's really right. not obtrusive. Nobody should be saying, oh, my gosh, you know, that sounds like an extra step. I mean, right. we're on our phones all day long anyway. You know yeah, exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. and they're always with us right it's never very far <laughs> right, exactly. so, uh, multi-factor authentication so that's it's that's one. one yeah the second one is is uh password changes you know okay. some organizations you see that you know it's unlimited you don't change it for, for a long time right. some people have it like you know 180 days um we recommend uh you know for a tighter environment 60 days 60 you know, day password uh, changes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 60 to 90 days, you know. And so. there's no, I mean, that's just a pain in the neck. Let's be honest. I mean, it is. like every time our administrators ask me to change my password, it's it's disruptive. Um, I have to do it on my phone and on my PC, but it's just the only way to keep things locked down, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and don't make it like a guessable version of the previous one, right? Right. And there, there are tools out there that we that it kind of helps with that process, so you can you know remember one password and then in the background it changes for you. So there's we can talk yeah. about that. I don't know if the people are interested, but That's but I, I know the pain point for for, for <laughs> having to, personally too. Like oh man, here we go again. I got to change. Here we back. go. Yeah, yeah it's going to be that kind of morning. Airport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that. But but uh, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, it's a necessary evil though. You can't you can't really avoid that one. So yeah. yeah. The, the last one, I say the third one is uh, guest accounts. Um, okay. So, for example, you know, Teams or SharePoint Online, if, if your environment is enabled, 
you can you can uh, invite people that are not part of your organization to come in and view your data, view your content. If you're working on a, for example, for in companies like ours, we're in the government contractor, we we're going after a, a a proposal for an agency, and we're bringing two to three other companies. Right. right. We have a process where we we stand up a Teams location to to manage all our proposal activities, different channels, different things, and we invite these folks, our partners, to come in and give them access to certain areas. Right. So we can now collaborate so much more it's so much easier to collaborate in this environment than sending mm -hmm. emails back and forth oh, of, the yeah. of that proposal which you know i mean